Interpreter Extensions, this time on Metasploit Minute. This Metasploit Minute is brought to you by Hack5 and viewers like you. Support us directly at hakshop.com. Welcome to Metasploit Minute, the breakdown on breaking in. I'm Rob Fuller, but you can call me Mubix. So this, today we're going to be going over some um, of the other extensions. We covered the core libraries. We also covered the standard API extension. Now we're going to be covering sort of just an overreach of all of the other extensions. So first off is obviously the priv extension. This gets loaded anytime you are in a privileged mode um, or the module says that it's a privileged mode. So priv, you have elevate commands. You also have Data, uh, password database commands and time stops. So the first one is git system. Everyone knows git system. Um, it, it does a number of different ways to actually get um, the system level uh, processed uh, or, or elevate to system. Um, hash dump, again, uh, pretty much everyone knows that one. And then time stomp. Um, not very many people actually use time stomp, but it's great when you're trying to be a little bit more stealthy. Um, it can do a the entire uh, mace tri tribute. So I'm going to do time stomp just to show you all of the options that are available to you. There are a ton. You can actually just clone kernel32.dll or, or other things. Um, it has some specific things for in case as well. So if you do use and hit tab or load and hit tab, um, I'm, I'm just accustomed to use. You can use load, which is the right way of doing things. Um, you can see all of the other extensions that are available to you. Sepia, Extended API, Incognito, Kiwi, LAN attacks, Mimikatz, and Sniffer. So the Sniffer module is actually allowing you to sniff on the remote host. So if I do use Sniffer, it should say success. And now when I do a question mark, I have all of the Sniffer stuff. So I can start, stop, release interfaces, all of this stuff, and it just loaded, right? So I do, um, let, me, let me do it the right way. Use, now I have, the rest, the things that aren't loaded yet. And the cool thing about this is once you have it loaded, even if you migrate to different processes, which blows my mind, even if you look, uh, migrate to different processes, you still have all of these extensions loaded that you use. So um, Mimikatz really, we've already kind of dealt with in the past where you just dump hashes and stuff, or dump pass, clear text passwords and stuff like that. Esepia is sort of an older one. Um, it's, I don't think it's really used that much anymore. Um, but it has um, the screen grab, you can do the screenshot. Um, so let's do load again. Um, let's do extended API, do a question mark. And you can see that these, every one that you load just adds its, adds its options to the bottom of the list of question mark based uh, commands. So we go up, there's Sepia's screen grab, and then we have extended API. And this is all thanks to OJ, um, one of the contributors to Metasploit, um, extended API. You have Windows Enum. Cool thing about Windows Enum, we talked about um, desktops in the previous episode with standard API. Windows Enum um, isn't like a Windows enumeration thing um, for ex actual Windows, like Microsoft Windows. It's actually the Windows on the, on the system or on the desktop. So if you want to know if KeyPass is running um, or you want to see what window or where it is. You can actually do Windows Enum and then grep out the uh, key pass uh, name, then kill key pass, then start the key logger, then wait for someone to put in the master password, and then, and then you're all set. And you can do all this in the background with a script or our post module. Um, so then service commands. So if you want to start or stop a service, if you want a NUMA service or all the services, um, and, and service query. This actually gives you the permissions in DACL format for um, the service. So if you want to parse the DACL, you can actually find out if you have permissions to edit the services or privilege escalate. So you can actually write a, a privilege escalation module to look through all the DACLs uh, for all the services and, and very easily find out if you can escalate using a, a badly configured service. Now the clipboard management commands. As you might have, uh, I'll throw this back to a Hack5 episode way, way long ago where we actually made a clipboard keylogger. Meterpreter now has one. You can do um, uh, clipboard monitor. And the cool thing about this one is instead of just getting text that gets clipboarded, you get 
images, you get anything, anything that someone puts into a, a clipboard, you can actually pull. So if they copy and paste a file, dangerous I know, if, depending on the size of the file, but you can actually dump all of the files that someone copies and pastes throughout the entire time of your interpreter session, which is awesome. Um, so if you see KeePass running, again, we're going back to KeePass. If you see KeePass running, why not just start the clipboard keylogger and see if they copy any of their passwords into the clipboard and now you have it set. So Windows and Num plus clipboard keylogger and you're good. Um, and if you want to play pranks or you want to be funny, you can do clipboard set text where it um, sets the text of whatever the clipboard is. So if you want to constantly set text to hacked or ha 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 and freak um, the victim one user out, uh, then you can. It's really fun. So then we have the ADSI commands. This is Active Directory Management commands where you can say, give me all the computers inside of the domain, a lot like the post module does, and I'm pretty sure that post module has been updated by uh, Meatballs to um, do it this way instead of the old way. Then you have domain query, gets all domain information back, user and, you know, and stuff like that. Then, if that wasn't enough, you have WMI query at your fingertips. So anything WMI can do, now you can do inside of an interpreter. And the great thing is, again, all of this is in the API for it to be extended up to an interpreter's UI. So you can code to your heart's consent, content to get this uh, doing whatever you want using any of these things. All right, so I'll go back to load. Okay, so all we have is incognito, Kiwi, LAN attacks, and Mimikatz. So I'll load Mimikatz just to show you. Oh, well, I'm in a x86 process and uh, I'm supposed to be in a 64-bit, but you can see the commands that I get, Kerberos, MSV, and we've gone over this. So the cool things about um, Kiwi, or load Kiwi, ah. again, it tells you that I'm in the wrong, wrong architecture process, is I have a creds all. The cool thing about creds all is it does all of the different cred modules, so I don't actually have to type wdigest, MSV, SSP, TK package, stuff like that, don't get all of them. The secret sauce that you really want to go, um, uh, this is going to air after DEF CON, so you want to go back and watch the videos from DEF CON, is the golden ticket stuff. Um, if you create a golden ticket in Windows, which a golden ticket is basically a Kerberos ticket, it's just golden because it lasts for 10 years, and we'll talk about that in a later episode, guaranteed. So Kerberos ticket list, you can list all the Kerberos tickets, purge, use, LSA dump, again, uh, it's dumping LSA stuff, and then Wi-Fi list. Cool thing about Wi-Fi list is you don't have to do the WLAN, WLAN profile stuff, it just lists it out, it does this using the APIs instead of running commands on disk. Much more stealthy. All right, so let's do load. We only have LAN attacks and incognito less left, so let's incognito. We already know about these, add group user, add local user, add user. These all automatically impersonate uh, uh, any tokens that it can see on disk and tries to add those or groups or um, users. Impersonate tokens just like steel token, list token, snarf token, or snarf hashes. Again, all the stuff we kind of already knew about in incognito. And use line attacks. I believe, oh, this is actually working again. So it was kind of broken for a while, but um, Looks like it's working again. So we have DHCP commands. We can actually um, log any DHCP server activity. So this, this can be really helpful when we find out that the DHCP server has a TFTP or, or a, a PX, Pixie boot stuff. We can actually start our own DHCP server on the interpreter session. We can do TFTP based stuff. So we can actually Pixie boot from our interpreter session and go, go watch. Um, uh, I don't, I don't exactly remember the name of the person who's, who put this together, so I apologize for that. But go watch, and I'll have this in the show notes or somewhere that people can get to it. Go watch their talk on, on the LAN attacks with Meterpreter. You'll find it very easy with Google. Um, and you can find how you can pixie boot a remote host using a Meterpreter session and load or download hashes and upload um, uh, add users and all kinds of fun stuff. So go check out their video online on that. And that's it, that's all of our extensions. If we type load and tab, there's nothing else. So what do you think? 
Email me msf at hack5.org and stay tuned to metasploitminute.com for more shows like these. Thanks again for supporting the show and if you want to support us even more, you can go to hakshop.com and enter code MOVIX and get free Metasploit Minute stickers. Until next time, I'll be hacking till the cows come home. Thank you.